This video is a continuation from the previous video and serves as a primer on second order differential equations and specifically as they apply to mechanical vibration problems. So we mentioned that we're trying to solve a second order differential equation in the form of mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to some function of time we call f of t. And I'll also mention that x is a function of time. I've just chosen to admit, uh, omit the explicit dependency just to try and save a bit of space. We also mentioned that the, there are two initial conditions that will need to be applied in order to solve the constants of integration. And these take the form that at time equals zero, um, the displacement is known and it's equal to x sub zero. And also at time equals zero, we know the velocity, x dot of zero, and that we'll call x dot sub zero, sometimes v sub zero, depending on what you're looking at. We also mentioned that the total response, x of t, is equal to the sum of the homogeneous solution, x sub h of t, and the particular solution, x sub p of t, and in the previous video, we solved for the homogeneous solution. So in this video, we're going to focus on the particular solution. Now, if you cast your mind back to when you study differential equations in your calculus classes, you might remember something called the method of undetermined coefficients. Of undetermined coefficients. And the idea was we assumed a solution based on the nature of f of t, and then we plugged it in the equation to find out what the coefficient should be. Now, just to shed a little bit more light on that, if f of t were, say, a function like t squared, let's just call it 3t squared, we would then assume a particular form of the solution, or a particular solution of the form, I should say, x of p of t is equal to a polynomial of the same order as the function. So in this case, the function is t squared. So what we would do is we would assume something like, um, uh, let's just call it d, these coefficients. So it would be d0 plus d1 times t plus d2 times t squared. And then what you do is you take x and its derivatives and you plug it into equation 1. And then you would go about equating the coefficients. So you would look at what would be the t to the 0 term, which is everything without a t in it. You would look at the t to the power of 1 term, which is just t. And you would also look at the t squared term. Okay? And you would say that everything on the left that multiplies t squared, for example, must equal the coefficients of everything on the right that multiplies t squared. Uh, so you've got three unknowns, d0, 1, and 2. You'll end up with three equations to solve simultaneously. I'm not going to do that here because um, it's not pertinent to what I'm trying to get through in this video. But uh, another case might be where you had an exponential, where if f of t were equal to something like some constant times e to the rt, for example, Let's just give these some numbers. That would be number 3, number 4, number 5. So in the event of this, you would therefore assume x particular to be in the form of some unknown constant, which we'll call d0, e to the rt. If I had on the right something else, like e uh, maybe... Um, this were a2 and r1, excuse me, a1 and r1, and a2 e to the r2t, then I'd have to add that here. I'd have to have d1 e to the r2t, and this would be r1t. So what we're trying to do in the case of an exponential is, on the left-hand side, we want to match for each type of exponential. We want to match it. And the same idea, you substitute it into equation 1, 
x and its derivatives, and then you equate everything that's multiplying e to the r1t and everything that's multiplying e to the r2t, and in this case you would have two equations and two unknowns. All right. But what we really want to look at is what happens when you've got some sort of a harmonic forcing function. So f of t is something like a times cosine, oops, cosine rt. We'll call this equation 5, 6, call this equation 7. And this is a problem that comes up a lot in uh, introductory vibrations problems, and that's why I thought I would tackle this one specifically. So, what do we do? We say that x particular of t is equal to d0 times cosine rt plus d1 times sine rt. Now, even though we've only got cosine on the right, we assume a solution of the form sine and cosine. If we had another term here that said cosine 2rt, we would have to say plus d2 cosine 2rt plus d3 sine 2rt. So whether or not we've got cosine or sine plus cosine, we have to assume both a cosine and a sine in the particular form of the equation, or the response, I should say. All right, so based on this, if I take the first derivative, xp dot of t, that's equal to, well, cosine becomes minus r sine, so minus r d0 sine rt plus r d1 cosine of rt. If I take another derivative, x double dot p of t is equal to minus r squared d0 cosine rt minus r squared d1 sine rt. We'll call this 8, 9, and 10. Right, now the idea is we want to substitute 7, 8, and 9, 7, 8, 9, and 10 into 1. Let me write that. So 7 through 10 into equation 1. Right, and we end up with, uh, what's the best way to write this? Minus m r squared d0, right, times cosine rt, um, minus, let me just see what I want to do here. Okay, so from equation 10 multiplied by r, I get minus m r squared d0 cosine rt minus m r squared d1 sine of rt minus c times r times d0 sine of rt plus cr d1 cosine rt plus, let's squeeze it in here, k times d0 times cosine of rt plus k times d1 times sine of rt. And that's got to equal the right-hand side, which is just f of t, which we're given up here in equation 7 as a cosine rt. Okay, so on the right-hand side, I've got just a cosine of rt. The coefficient of the sine rt term is obviously 0, since it's not there. And then on the left-hand side, I've got coefficients of sine and cosine rt, and the idea is to equate the coefficients on the left with the coefficients of the right. 
This is where the name undetermined, method of undetermined coefficients come from. So if I look at the cosine RT term, the equation that comes out of that is minus MR squared D0 minus CR D0 uh, it's plus CR D0, excuse me. It's this term here. Okay, plus k times d0. Uh, I just said that wrong. That should be d1. Okay, let me let me say that again. So this is plus cr d1, and then this term here, which gives me a plus k d0. And that must equal a, since the coefficient of cosine rt on the right is equal to a. And then similarly for sine RT, the coefficients look like minus MR squared D1 this term here, so minus CR D0 and then finally this last term which is KD1 and that's equal to 0 because on the right-hand side, there is no sine term. Had there been a sine term up here, then we would have just equated that to that coefficient. And this is why I'm saying that even if there's no sine term, you've got to assume that there's both to begin with. That's the way this method works. So equation 10, equation 11, 12, and 13. So equations 12 and 13 um, are two equations we can solve simultaneously for d0 and d1. Let me just underline that. Um, I'm going to save you the algebra and give you the results. This gives that d0 is equal to a times k minus m r squared divided by c squared r squared plus k squared minus 2kmr squared plus m squared r to the fourth. We call that 14. And d1 is given by a times c times r divided by c squared r squared plus k squared minus 2kmr squared plus m squared r4, which we'll call 15. And that is it. So, if you take equation 8 and equation, yeah, just equation 8, which is up here, and you substitute what we know for d0 and d1 in as the coefficients, we then get the particular form of the solution. Now, I mentioned before in the previous video that when we solve the homogeneous part, mathematically it's called the homogeneous solution, but actually in terms of vibrations we call it the transient solution. It's telling you what the system has a tendency to want to do. In this case, when we solve the particular solution, we're solving something called the forced vibration problem, and the solution is also known as the steady state solution. So, I can put this up here forced solution, which is also equal to steady state solution. So sometimes you might be asked to find the steady state solution. That's just asking you to find the particular solution to x. Okay. So the total solution, write it here as transient, So the total solution is the sum of the transient solution, which is what the system wants to do, plus the steady state solution, which is what the system is being forced to do, which is kind of an interesting way of thinking about it. The response is the combination of what the system wants to do plus what the system is being forced to do. Okay, and before finishing off, there's just one other thing I'd like to point out here, and that is this. D1 is a function of C which you'll find out in a different video, is the damping rate, uh, constant. C is the amount of damping in the system. If there's no damping, in other words, if this term in the differential equation is zero, then D1 is equal to zero. 
What does that mean? That means if I'm if I have no damping, if I'm forcing something with a cosine type function, the response is going to be a cosine function. In other words, there's no phase difference between the force and the response. The response is completely in phase with the force. And I don't want to say too much more about that now. This will be coming up in future videos. But I did want to make the point that the damping in a system is actually what leads to phase shift. And we'll find out more about that later. So anyway, I hope you found something useful in this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and that way others can get to see it too. Or better still, leave us a comment below. And thank you for watching. We'll catch up with you in the next video.